This case concerns retirement benefits due under the Social Security Act for a retired military technician of dual status. Under the law, a civilian position formerly held by David Babcock. Like all dual state technicians, Babcock was required to maintain membership in the National Guard. For his full-time job as a technician, which included work as a test pilot and pilot instructor, Babcock received civil service pay and civil service retirement system pay pension plan from the Office of Personal Management. So he is, at least in part, a government employee. Fine. For his separate National Guard service, which included part-time drills, training exercises, and one active duty deployment, Babcock received military pay and military pension from a different arm of the federal government, the Defense Finance and Accounting Service. Okay, fine. So he is a multiple different things. Okay, fine. On Upon retirement, Babcock applied to the Social Security Administration for benefits. The agency granted benefits by it applied a statutory windfall elimination provision and reduce the amount of benefits to reflect Babcock's receipt of civil service pay pension plans for his work as a technician. Babcock sought reconsideration, arguing the reduction should not apply because the pension payments at issue fell within a statutory exception for payments based wholly upon service as a member of the United States Armed Forces. So one of the things the Social Security Administration can do is reduce your benefits, at least in part based on other benefits you achieved elsewhere. The idea being that you can't recover twice, which is a kind of a principle that applies in, in a lot of law, right? So if you want to sue somebody for sue somebody, you can only recover for the total amount of damages. And if you sue multiple different people for the same thing, you can still only recover the total amount of damages. So if you sue someone for, say, a million dollars, let's say there's a million dollars in total damages, right? There's a million dollars in total damages. Now, you might be able to sue a lot of different people in a lot of different combinations in a lot of different ways. You might be able to sue somebody and get it all from them. You might be able to sue a bunch of people. But what you can't do is get more than a million dollars total. If a million dollars is your total loss premise, if a million dollars is your total loss, what you can't do is get a million more than a million dollars in recovery. In compensation damages, one might note, by the way, in compensation damages, if there are punitives, maybe you can get punitives more than that because there are multiple different people who are responsible. So maybe multiple different people have to pay punitives, but you can't be compensated more than once. So this is a general principle. So this, this principle in law that you can't like have more than one recovery is being applied here as well. Social Security Administration says, okay, you have benefits, but we're gonna give you less benefits because you already got your benefits somewhere and you're only entitled to one set of benefits. Okay, that's the idea the Social Security Administration is playing with. He says that that general principle, you can't recover more than once, as it were, doesn't apply here because there's a statute that specifically says it doesn't apply here. Okay, let's give that a shot. The agency denied reconsideration and Babcock exhausted all available agency review which is something you have to do in the federal system. You have to exhaust all your administrative remedies before you can sue. The district court upheld the decision. The Sixth Circuit also affirmed. So the, the, the agency said no. The district court said no. The Sixth Circuit said no. Okay, what does the Supreme Court want to say? Civil service, civil service payments based on employment as a dual status military technician are not payments based on service as a member of a uniform service. Okay. So this service that he did as a civil service is not based on his military service. It's a different thing. Fine. It might, in some sense, have military aspects to it, but it's not exactly unheard of for civilians to do things related to the military. There are civilians doing military jobs in multiple different senses. And so it's a civil job, not a military job, even though he's also a member of the National Guard. Those are military jobs, but this is not a military job. Fine. Retirees receive Social Security benefits based on progressive formula that awards a percentage of average past earnings. The formula originally did not account for earnings from jobs exempt from Social Security taxes, many of which provide for separate pensions. So not all jobs have Social Security taxes. Fine. In response to this windfall or potential windfall, Congress modified the formula to reduce benefits when a retiree receives a separate pension. But Congress left benefits unchanged if the pension was based wholly on service as a, as a member of the Uniform Military Service. So the military is special in this domain. Their, their benefits are on top of any other benefits. There is not a dual accounting thing for the military. It's one of your benefits by being a member of the military, I guess. The National Guard is defined as part of being the uniform service. So whether the uniform exception depends on whether his employment as a technician was as a member of the National Guard. So was he doing the work as a technician as part of his work for the National Guard? Were they the ones employing him? It was not. 
In context, as is read most naturally to mean in the role, capacity, or function of. And the status defines the role, capacity, or function. For purposes of this section and any other provision of law, a technician is a civilian employee assigned to a civilian position and authorized and accounted for as a civilian. He's a civilian in that role, which among other things means he can quit at any time because he's not a member of the military. Technicians hired before 1984, like Babcock, are members of the civil service entitled to pay under Title V of the Code, which governs pay and benefits of civil servants. So the, the federal government changed its retirement and pension plans system for federal employees in 1984. So there's, well, there was one system before the civil service plan, and afterwards it's called FERS. So yeah, they're employee, and they're employees who have both, because obviously they're employees who worked before 1984 and after 1984. So yeah, he's in this old school retirement plan, the old school pension plan, which we call the civil service plan instead of FERS. Fine, but he's not a military service. Makes logical sense. Looking to broader statutory context, technicians possess characteristics of civilian rights to seek redress for employment discrimination and receive workers' compensation, disability benefits, and compensatory time off for overtime. These provisions demonstrate that this is not the military. That distinction holds true even though Babcock also served at other times in a different capacity as a member of the National Guard. He had double jobs. His civil service pension payments are not part of that service, for which he received a separate military pension, and that pension does not trigger that windfall provision. He's entitled to whatever additional benefits that pension gives him. That's fine. As a condition of employment, such as requirement that a technician maintain guard membership, is not the same as the capacity in which he serves. So in order to be a technician, he has to maintain guard membership, but there's still different roles because he could quit the civilian role, right? He may not necessarily be able to quit the National Guard role. So to be a technician, you must also be a member of the National Guard. So he wants to be a technician. So he becomes a member of the National Guard. If for some reason he decides he doesn't want to be a technician anymore, he can just quit. That doesn't, of course, necessarily mean he can just quit being a member of the National Guard, but he can quit because they're separate roles. Great. Babcock contends that technicians' full-time job qualifications, duties, and dress code render it functionally indistinguishable from the Guard service, and the court should interpret as more loosely to capture payments for service in the likeness as a member of the uniformed service. That's not the language Congress chose. But the court finds no reason to adopt this meaning of as other than the most natural meaning of as, particularly where Babcock's functional test is inconsistent with the statutory scheme. Yeah, Congress made choices, and those are the choices Congress made. Determining whether Babcock's employment was service as a member of the National Guard does not turn on factors like whether he wore his uniform to work, but rather on how Congress classified the position. Civilian classification of dual staff technicians for bookkeeping purposes controls when it comes to pay and benefits. Barrett's delivers the opinion of the court in which Gorsuch delivers a dissent. So this is an eight to one decision. Thus, that brings us to the end of the decision of the Babcock versus the acting commissioner of social security. In this case, Babcock wanted to be a technician, a worthwhile goal, but to be the kind of technician he wanted to be, he had to also be a member of the National Guard. So now he's both. Now he's a technician and a member of the National Guard, and he's getting paid by both, and getting benefits of both, and pension benefits, and so forth and so on. This is fine, and Babcock enjoyed a long and illustrious career. Seemed to be happy doing it. Eventually, he came to retire from both of these positions, and he wants so benefits from Social Security. Social Security looks at the law and says, hmm, the law says, among other things, we can deduct benefits you got somewhere else because you've already been compensated once. And Congress passed a law basically said no double compensation. He says, well, there's an exception to that for military service. I can get double compensation if it's military service. Congress said the military is special. And yeah, they said, yeah, it is, but this is a military service. So the question is, is it or not? And the Supreme Court says, no, it's not. Although you are required apparently to be a member of the National Guard, that is the military, to be this kind of technician, they are separate positions because he could have quit his position as a technician any time because it was a civilian role. So he could have just quit. This, of course, does not necessarily impact what he does or does not do for the National Guard. That's an entirely separate matter because now you're a member of the military son. So yeah, the Supreme Court rules, perhaps unsurprisingly, that he can't collect twice because of the choices Congress made in the statute. And that at least brings us to the end of discussion of this case.